Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Ranks of the Idiots. I'm Corbin. And I'm not. It's true. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Oh, juicy content. It's so oh, yeah. juicy. It's quite it's spongy. <laughs> Today it is. Uh, and uh, thank you for the and follow us on official Twitter account. And today! Oh my goodness, what have we done? I don't know what we did. Me too. Uh, we finally watched Shola. Dun, uh, dun, da! Shola. Um, the 1975 film starring Amitak Bachchan. Amitak Bachchan. Da -da -ding, ding, 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 and, uh, ding. say, uh, San... Sanjeev Kumar. Sanjeev Kumar. Yep. And, uh, and Helen, the girl who's dancing for Gabar and crew in the middle, right after the intermission, she starts belly dancing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's gotcha. Helen. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and say that name for me too, as well. Amjad Khan. Amjad. Who will. plays Gabber Singh. Yes. yes. Gabber. Gabber Singh, not Kabir Singh. Right. <laughs> or Corbin Singh. <laughs> but, we'll read the synopsis for me real quick. After his family is murdered by a notorious and ruthless bandit, a former police officer enlists the services of two outlaws to capture the bandit. It's directed by... Ramesh Sippy. Ramesh Sippy in yes. 1975. And it's a Sippy production. Oldest film we've... Obviously, it's a sport because 100% of you have seen this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to go, no spoilers here! Exactly, no. But for those of you who haven't, like that one American subscriber in Des Moines, go watch it and then come back. <laughs> But, uh, this is a uh, three hour and 35 minute film, I believe, is how long uh, it was. Good, uh, good exact time there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, what, what were your initial thoughts? I have mixed emotions. Okay. What about you? It depends. It depends. But yeah, what, 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 were, your, what were your thoughts? Um, it's a very strange mixture of genre mm -hmm. as well as a very strange mixture of moments that I thought were fantastic and other moments that were really bothersome. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I can't deny the importance of the film in terms of what it did and in, 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 it, it, was, it was groundbreaking as far as, like I've done a little research on it since we watched it in terms of uh, it was a huge, big budget movie. It it broke records in terms of people watching it. Uh, it was uh, not a critical success at first, but then it was a monster success and still is for people. Uh, but it's it's definitely a, a cult classic type. Yeah, thing. definitely a cult classic. So and it it had there were moments where I was deeply, deeply impressed, mm -hmm. and then there were other moments where I was v confused and didn't understand. So it's a it's a it's a mixed bag for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, that, I I could understand that and uh, all that kind of stuff. I actually really ended up enjoying this. I watched it with my wife, and she helped me a lot actually, because her growing up with her father, westerns were their that was their genre. Yeah. That's what they watched. Yeah. Um, and so she was able to help me. She was like. Um, I looked it up. This was actually inspired by the Magnificent Seven, the mm -hmm. original Magnificent Seven, which you can tell um, after watching it. And then yep. she said also after watching it, she was like, it was actually very reminiscent of the good, bad, and the ugly. Yep. Um, and so in, in the middle of it, because I watched this probably in about two and a half parts, mm -hmm. uh, I stopped because obviously it's long, and so I didn't want it to drag on um, for my ADD brain. Um, so I kind of split it up um but she was able to explain to me she was like it's actually very reminiscent of old westerns 100 um in well, the best of ways in in terms of i was like so does did old westerns often have like because the main characters i thought were amazing and we'll get into them i thought uh, the Bakchan, the other main guy mm -hmm. uh whatever his name is uh San, sanjeev the plays and then, Viru. and then um I'm at Khan. I thought we're all no, yeah sanjeev plays stalker uh and then and then uh yeah i may say his name uh Amjad Khan, the guy who plays the, the villain. Oh, yeah. I thought we're all really, really good and mm -hmm. grounded performances. Yes. And then, obviously, the, some of the side characters were very overdramatic. And I was like, is that normal? And she's like, yes, it's actually very normal. You have your, uh, especially old, old Hollywood yeah. westerns. Yeah. Like, you have your John Waynes or your, um, what's his, uh, Cool Hand Luke, uh, what's his name? Uh, Paul Newman was Cool Hand Luke. Like, like, like Clint, Clint Eastwood. Paul Newman, Clint Eastwood as well. Yeah. Um, very grounded 
hero, but then the side characters often very exaggerated mm -hmm. characters, kind of yeah. like that main first guy in um, that they got them the half of the reward. Uh -huh. He was very that, yeah. and then Basanti, yeah. when we first met her, was that way. Right. Uh, I think it was on purpose. They just wanted us to be annoyed by her, obviously. Yes. <laughs> just, like, just like Big B was annoyed. <laughs> yes. Uh, the in his ears. I was like, oh god, my leg is stuck. <laughs> uh, but a lot of the flaws with this, I couldn't really hold against it, like the length, the old Hollywood stuff. Right. That's long as hell too. It's just how films were made back then. And this is going to be even longer. It's Indian, so it's mm -hmm. going to be even longer. Right. Um, and then some of the acting, she explained to me, she was like, I think it was on purpose. A lot of these actors um, were very heightened on purpose. Yeah. Um, not the main three. They were incredible. Like I said, we'll talk about them. Um, but I actually ended up really enjoying it because it was so unique. And it established itself in the beginning as being weird. It established itself. At what point did it become uh, that for you? Uh, when they were on the um, motorcycle. Yeah, that's that's when I realized. I said, okay. And I actually liked, I liked that it got quirky, weird. Yeah, um, I was very impressed with the opening train sequence. Oh, so was I. I this was has very for being impressed. Being made a long time ago, I mean, 1975, but a long time ago. It was very impressive. Some of the fight scenes, I, some of the train scenes, some 100 of the. One hundred percent agree. It was as good. The stunt work and the action sequences were as good as anything you would have seen in American TV and film in, in the in the mid nineteen seventies. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stunt work was just freaking fantastic, mm -hmm. and when you realize how little technological advances they had at the time. How, how the, just the minimal things they had to do to make it work uh, and make it work well. The thing I was, there were the two things I was most impressed by and which for me elevates this to a point where I can't deny the greatness of the movie. I consider it to be a great movie. Mm -hmm. But the watchability factor, which I'll talk about in a second, was, was hard for me in a lot of spots. The greatness of it for me is, is threefold. First, the, the quality of the action sequence, they had a burn sequence. Mm -hmm. When burn sequences weren't really being done, let no, alone no. mastered, they had a full upper body burn that they held on camera for a good 15 seconds mm -hmm. that I just was floored by. As well as horse work, as well as, I mean, a lot of horse work. Just, just fantastic stunt work. Mm -hmm. Top, top, top of the notch. Did not know that Indian cinema was at that level of, of action and stunt work. Secondarily, I felt the, the performances of the main three that you talked about were astonishingly grounded. And Basanti even got better as yes. I think it went on. A hundred percent. And it's not a surprise no. that the people who are the most grounded are theatrically trained and sense. come from theater backgrounds. That makes sense. Um, and then also the primary story, mm -hmm. the main story throughout about this detective and this villain and their feud and what their feud was about and how it happened and how these two guys play a part in that. I love that more than anything mm -hmm. and I would like to take that story sincerely. I think that story should be taken and could be turned into a contemporary American Western mm -hmm. and be a absolutely phenomenal story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it is loaded with fury and anger and hurt and uh, so those yeah. are my favorite takeaways. Yeah, and um, we can talk about like them. I I thought the way they were introduced because this was a very different performance for Amitabh Bachchan for me that we've least. seen one hundred percent. I mean, no, most people probably saw this. I guess this is the first thing. You yeah, know. yeah. Um, but since we've known him, kind of reverse, right, <laughs> right. Um, and going back, this is like a so such a different performance. He's so cool. And collected and, even and shy, yeah, very shy, yeah, um, and, and but very direct and like he he was definitely the star of this film and I loved the way it ended with him dying. I didn't yeah. see it coming. I, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, uh, but I told Steph at the beginning because I looked it up. She was like, what is this based off? Because she has seen every western, like I said. Yeah. Um, she said, what is this based off? And she's like, uh, I said, oh, it says it's based off of. Um, um, the Magnificent Seven. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, it's gonna be sad. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, oh yeah. Yeah. She said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I too, westerns. I love westerns. Just love westerns. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, 
was wanting us to just be a pure Western. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I liked how I know I liked how weird it was. I think I probably liked it more than you. Yeah, um, you probably did. Let me ask you if you like this because I'll tell you the thing I just did not like to the point of detesting and just was like, get rid of this, please. Was the whole Hitler Nazi prison guard guy? <laughs> that that section for me was that threw me so bad because I was expecting a very deeply grounded, dramatic Western style story with maybe some points of humor and it went from being like the Magnificent Seven to Mel Brooks. Yeah. Well, and I'm like, but that only lasted, what's the point? But that only lasted 10 minutes. So. True. Uh, that and then it, it got, it was also like, they, it was, Steph, once again, uh, she's really intelligent. Um, she, yes, she is. She said that was like, she like right when the shot, when he was playing with the ball, she was like, that's Charlie Chaplin. Mm, it's a yeah. it was a direct shot yes. that Charlie Chaplin had as Hitler yes. doing the world. Yes. So it was clearly something that they wanted yes. in it. Uh, it, it might have worked at the time. It, it was just it was obviously weird. It didn't bother me because it didn't continue with the film. Thank right. God. Um, but it was like this is ten minutes. I kind of just threw it away. It was one of those things. Obviously, this film. The, my biggest flaw for it was that. It was so long, and you can't, like I said, I can't really blame it, because that's... Right. I can't old Westerns it. were that way. It's India, yeah, it's so it's, India. of course it's long. Of course. Um, but obviously, that's the only flaw I could find. You know, like, I could watch this again, and now, like, since I don't have to watch the dialogue, I could yeah. fast forward, and then I could also just, like, go do something while certain scenes are on, and come back when there's an amazing action scene, the train scene, the... Because there were some amazing some scenes. Great and scenes. And also some great acting scenes between great. the people. The, the, the first scene that really, really, like, drew me in, where I was completely captivated, felt like what I was, hap what I was watching was really happening mm -hmm. in the way that great, dramatic, dangerous moments in Westerns do, was that moment when uh, Gubber Singh's men come and they disappointed him by failing to do what they were supposed oh, to I do. Oh, I loved it. And he's got the three of them there with his gun and he puts the three bullets in. That's a, that scene was written, shot, and acted brilliant. That actor was amazing. Yeah. We talk about him. The guy who plays Gubber my, Singh? Obviously, great. outside of Big B, he was definitely my favorite part. One, the most pleasant surprise. Yeah. Because I didn't anticipate somebody coming up that we didn't know who would play a bad guy. Well, I, I, I know he was coming because when I've asked people, it's like, so what scenes should we recreate from old Bollywood? They, it was often, they wanted, I didn't know what they were talking because I hadn't seen it, but they said some scene from Corbin can play, they wanted me to play the villain. Well, and I remember the, one of the first memes that was created for us was the, the motorcycle meme. And we had no idea what that was Which was one of my favorite about. parts of the whole film. Oh, a hundred percent. It was just like, well, and let's, But then he just popped up out of nowhere. No. <laughs> and when they were driving, let's just point out for a second that oh. the two lead actors, because it was both of the lead actors, they were driving in that motorcycle and sidecar in pretty life-threatening ways. <laughs> they were bouncing all over the place. And I thought, you have your lead actors in extremely precarious positions right now, and and you don't care. And I thought that was pretty. They, they great. were probably being pulled on a. Yeah, but they were still moving at normal clips, yeah. and at any moment they could have tossed over and really injured themselves. Uh, but I, I loved it. I love that yeah. scene because I also love that it established. This is not going to be a typical Western. This is going to be like a really quirky right. Western right. In, in parts. In and parts. So I was like, I was like, cool, they're establishing this at the beginning so you're not kind of thrown off when something, Which weird, I, when something weird happens. And I did appreciate that. I did appreciate the weirdness and, and the uh, annoying aspect of Basanti. The, the thing that, re the, the one, the only thing that for me was really a why was the, the yeah. Nazi prison sequence. I felt like it was pointless. Yeah. Uh, I also felt at the very ending, and this is, this is like you nitpicking the time and giving it permission, but it, was, it went from I felt being very, very grounded to the, the climax being um, melodramatic in terms of the way it was being told. And it went from being really believable to being not believable at the very, very end. I kind of got disconnected at the end when, of bit. When the guy with no arms was killing him with his feet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't, I actually thought it was funny. I thought it was going back to the quirkiness. It was like the almost Monty Python. It's like, I know, which for you've me. You've got no arms or legs. It, for, it's just a flesh wound. I know, but for me, it's like watching Clint Eastwood in a whole movie suddenly go, Yeah, but they. Da -da 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 I hope you like their show. I'm like, what are you doing right now, guys? Yeah, but <laughs> they established themselves as it wasn't a Clint Eastwood thing. So I was like, but It had, oh, it did. It, it, it had very grounded moments. Yeah, but then it also had very quirky moments. So you, of course it's gonna it's gonna go back and forth. I, I, I didn't mind that part. I was like, this is quirky. It's yeah, weird. I, of course. I mean, I was like, right when I saw that he had the spikes, I was like, oh, this is gonna be epic. Yeah. No, I, I wanted I wanted the ending. Well, I think be, that's that's your fault. No, because that's what it was. It, it established itself. They they literally had a sidecar go off and then come back on its own. True. <laughs> but those were ancillary fillers honoring other moments. The main story was very grounded and very serious. They didn't do anything quirky with Gabra Singh and his three guys. They didn't do anything quirky when the de detective's family is murdered. Uh, they didn't do anything quirky. Well, those are different parts. They're, they they right. have but, different parts for each thing. But that's what I'm talking about. That's a, that through story. About, and it wasn't like it wasn't like slapstick. It was meant to be like kind of weird, but it was also not meant. I think the only weird part was that um, they didn't have the technology to really show this guy, because <laughs> obviously it looked like a dummy when he was, oh, but yeah. they didn't really have the technology then. And then it also came back at the end when he like just broke down at the end that he's finally killed him and he's finally sobbing about his family. That I liked. I would have went, I just- This was made in 1975, Rick. I know that. <laughs> it was made in 1975. I'm not talking about the technological aspects, I'm talking about the storytelling. When I saw he had pointy shoes, I thought, he wanted to kill him. That's the only way he could kill him. He doesn't have any arms or legs. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> right. <laughs> so for me, I didn't like- So you like, like the quirkiness until they bring it in at the end. I didn't even yeah. really like the quirkiness. I, 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 I don't think you got the film. I don't think you understood it. I, I, I may not have. I just know, I felt there was an extremely powerful story being told that turned into the kind of silliness I see in over-the-top exaggerated films that have come out of It like, wasn't that Godzilla exaggerated and... at the end. It was exaggerated because it was like, I mean, this probably won't happen, but it wasn't like Three Stooges. No, it wasn't Three Stooges, but the level of be believability went completely out the window. Well, the, the level end. of believability of the whole thing is weird. They, these guys can't shoot like that with those types of guns that fast. The whole thing is kind of unbelievable. Well, not so much so that a man without arms is going to definitively beat up another guy with arms, and he suddenly goes, and, and, and at his age, he's doing feats of superhuman strength yeah, with his I'm, jumping. I'm not saying it's not weird, but it's not like it was out of the realm of the film. The film established itself as, it's just not really in reality. <laughs> But it had so many grounded moments. And it also had so many not grounded moments. And the not grounded moments weren't part of the main story. That's my point. Yes, they were. You think that the story of this film is, is, is dismantled by removing the Nazi guy in it. That's not the only part I'm talking about. I'm talking no, I know. About the, the rest of it is like they, like they have so many moments where they defy gravity, where they like defy logic, defy physics. But they don't do it in the context of the meaty story. They do it as ancillaries. It, w it wasn't that odd, really. That you didn't, s the final fight sequence for you didn't disconnect you and make you think this is melodramatic. No, I was like, this is exactly what the film has been. That's what it was to me. Okay, full, like the moment with Gaber Singh and his three guys. There was nothing quirky or unbelievable Once about again, it. the whole thing is not quirky. They, they go in and do quirkiness every which, every little parts. They don't do it right. all at once. Agreed. But the quirky- We're talking about this too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like it, I get it. No, 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 no. As a whole, it's not that I didn't like the film. I didn't like that aspect. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but I like this guy a lot, the uh, Ahmed Khan. I thought he did really, really well. I thought some as Gaber, yeah, yeah, uh, very surprisingly. Good. I liked Just... his quirkiness. I liked the fact that he kept laughing and he was kind of almost um, off as a rocker. Um, a I lot. believed he was dangerous. Yes, um, I believed him as this character. Um, so I thought that was really, really good. I'd like to see more of him um, if he's like still acting. Or no, he died in 1992. Okay. And more of Helen. What Helen? 
I don't know who that is. See, you already forgot. I don't. I don't know why that was such a big deal to you. Um, but I thought the Passanti number uh, when she was she said she had to dance. It wasn't Passanti who danced. It was Helen. No. In front of Gobber Singh. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't. Oh yeah, that was Passanti when she mm -hmm. stepped on the glass. No, no, no. That's a different dance sequence. No, I'm talking about the end when they threw glass on the thing. So if you don't keep dancing, he's gonna die. Right, 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 right. That right. was Basanti. That's correct. That was. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not talking about whoever the hell you're talking about. No, I'm, I'm talking about Basanti because she's yeah. actually a main character. Got it. Um, but uh, I, I love that sequence. Yeah. And also, did you pick up on where we've heard that before? No. That song? Well, that it was inspired. The song we heard was inspired by Cholet. Super third. Really? Basanti don't dance in front of these dogs. <laughs> Did you pick up on that on your own? No. Okay. Wow. I would have been so impressed no. if that was purely something you saw on the because, Oh, it's that in, connection. In the, wow. In the Super 30 review, yeah. and so we talked about it, we liked it, and the, somebody was like, that's from Cholet. So I kept actually waiting for the ah, song. Ah, okay. I okay. kept waiting for the wow. song, and the, the song never came. But yeah. then she was like, he said, Basanti don't dance in front of these dogs. Yeah. So I was waiting for Basanti to dance, and that's he just said the line. Um, but that's cool. What a cool little shout out that is from yeah. Super Thirty. Yeah, that was that was really that's cool. great. We thought it was just made up, but I mean, it's a they 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 did their English from their watching of Cholet. Um, so they got that obviously watching that's Super very Thirty. Cool. We didn't get that. At yeah, the time. not at all because uh, we didn't know Cholet at all. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I thought it was really cool. I, um, the, I do know there was some behind the scenes romances going on here. Oh, really? And shenanigans of sorts. Yeah, amongst really? cast members. Mm -hmm. Who? Uh, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Literally all the leads. Oh, really? There was triangles and people wanting other people who shouldn't be wanting other people because they're married. <laughs> and no. and uh, yeah, like between all of the leads. Really? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> cool. But it was also apparently in the, the book, and I got this from that the Bollywood book. Oh, okay. Uh, the the uh, groundbreaking nature of of the film in terms of it was a considered at the time a massive budget film. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like I guess nine or ten million U.S. dollars at the time, which was really really high. It made thirty million ultimately, which was a huge, wow. um, beautiful success. Make three times what you put into the film. Um, a lot of other aspects of it that were very, very groundbreaking. Yeah, I loved a lot of the songs. Uh, I thought they were really, really cool, uh, unique, yeah. uh, old school style songs. I loved the main three. They were obviously my favorite part was the just the especially Big B. He mm -hmm. was amazing, and then uh, he was really good too. He was probably my third favorite. But uh, the the villain and Big B <laughs> were definitely my favorites. Uh, yeah, in terms of their gravitas, and, and I will say this as well. Um, I I liked a couple of other things we haven't mentioned. I did I did really I felt that the music throughout, not just the songs, because I like the songs, but I felt that the the music. Granted, at times this was the nineteen seventies. Someone would say a line, and the orchestra would dun 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 dun. That was normal. You get a, they get a pass for that. The but I really liked the use of music throughout. When it was used, how it was used, it, I felt like we were in yeah. that did the that world. Did the Foley work take you back to yesteryear? Yeah, it really did. And I can't say <laughs> I really I really can't say enough about the the, the special effects, the action sequences, oh, yeah. and the stunt work. I was deeply, deeply the impressed. The opening with of this that. film was amazing. Amazing. The, the, the train so, scene. The train it was sequence such an amazing was an incredible. I, I can't stress for those of you who who can easily take for granted what you see today with the special effects that we have today, what they had to do for that sequence. Oh yeah. I think that sequence, if I'm remembering correctly, took two weeks to shoot. Really? Yeah. Which is not a surprise. No. Nope. Because that was a real train. <laughs> really moving with real stunt work falls off of it that you not only had to capture but then you had to capture it and make sure you had continuity yeah. so everything looked right I just yeah. it, incredible th this movie needs to be watched for people just to be shown you know that's one of the things we talk about in terms of Americans not appreciating the fact that India has not been the impression we had before we started the channel was that American cinema has always been doing this at every level, always, and Indian cinema is like light years behind us. This is a great example of how that stereotype is needing to be smashed. Mm -hmm. 
because the quality of the action and the stunt work and everything with the cinematography and the direction was comparable to anything you would have seen in American cinema and TV at the mm -hmm. time. All of the TV series, all of those westerns that we mentioned, it's at that level. I am glad we got to a classic. Uh, yeah, me finally, too. And so we can kind of know the differences in between yeah. this era, the 90s era, and then the current era. Correct. Basically, I think the three eras of Bollywood. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> I did end it, but my, one of my favorite lines was from Basanti when she was running away from the, the bandits. Uh -huh. And she was like, run, horse, it's a matter of my chastity. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great line. Oh. And she went for me, she went from being, I was annoyed with her like, like Big B was. Yeah. I was like, oh goodness, stop she got, talking. She got, she got a lot more normal. I really liked her toward the end. I yeah. was like, this is, this is a sweet girl. I like this girl. Yeah. Uh, and I could see why, and I, the other thing, I'm so glad I remember this. I love any movie that can depict the love of two men for one another without sexualizing it. Mm. Um, just because so often, and understandably so, because there haven't been stories that have been told that actually do depict that when that has happened. Yeah. But it was really beautiful to see two guys yeah. who just, the just loving friendship, the deeply loving friendship, the literal sense. I, I got emotional, even though it had the melodrama. I was getting emotional with Viru. Oh yeah, that was telling great, him great don't scene. leave me. He did a great job. I, I don't want to live without you. Yeah. You know, I, I thought he did a really good job. With I that. called the double sided coin too. Oh, oh, did you? Oh, I called that. I was like, that's a double. Anytime I see a coin, I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the cynic in me. The cynic in the skeptic. That's uh, a double sided coin. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm I'm so not that much. I, I was like, oh, it was a double sided coin. He was always gonna do the things that was best for his buddy. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. yeah, I'm such a goof. Yeah, I'm so I'm so gullible. But yeah, I really loved it. I could definitely watch this again. I could watch it again I, too. I would, I would skip through the Nazi crap. Oh yeah, I would I, I would watch it like I think a lot of people like it'll it's on and they'll do stuff while it's on. Come back during the good scenes. One hundred percent. That's how people watch this film. Yeah, and I could totally do that because there's so many great scenes in this. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I hundred percent love it. What other classics should we watch next, please? Yes. Um, there's, I mean, there's a ton. There's, there's a ton Joda, we need to watch. Joda Akbar. There's yep. uh, the, that other one that's, I always forget the name. Starts with a B, though. <laughs> I can see, the, I know the comments. I have literally been requesting this every day for eight months. <laughs> thank you for your patience, because we know you have. Uh, so thank you for your patience. And uh, 